Yay, Jesus. I hope he does the women justice. I really do. I really, really do. He won't. Concupition. Okay. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Earth feels like uh, taking the biggest shit you've ever taken. Well, cushion for the cushion. <laughs> Welcome to Unpack It, the unruly and inappropriate show where former cult kids read the books of their former cult. <laughs> I'm Patty, and with me is my sister, Nancy. She and I make a podcast called The Apostate Sisters here on YouTube. And for this show, we collaborate with our good friend, Joel. He makes a channel on YouTube and on TikTok called Mr. Difficult. And today, we might finally be getting to the juicy parts of the book we've been going through, The Missing Dimension in Sex, by one Herbert W. Armstrong, who we just love to talk about. So, shall we get started, my friends? Yes. I'm ready. I'm ready for the foreplay to end. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little raw. So, let's just get this done. All right. Beginning of chapter nine. Man has produced many highly complicated mechanisms out of matter he has appropriated from the ground. This huge intricately designed modern newspaper and magazine presses bring exclamations of amazement from visitors seeing one for the first time. I am reminded of this because we have a number of these big magazine presses in our enlarged printing <laughs> plants in Radlett, England and North Sydney in Australia and previously in Pasadena, California. Who else is getting Trump vibes right now? Like oh, totally. to talk about things on such a grand scale. Like this was huge. You wouldn't believe the number of people. It was the it was the most people I've ever seen. In any I'm sorry, I'm getting Amazing. off topic again, but that that's very much what small minded and small wienered men do. They have to say oh this is so big i had the biggest company i have the the wife with the biggest tits and whatever the fuck it is but the largest most complicated machines man has designed pale to insignificance beside the most wonderful of all mechanisms the human body and mind specifically the penis <laughs> <laughs> It's so big, trust me, people. I have no problem. No problem. It's not like a tiny mushroom at all. This awe inspiring mechanism also was formed from matter out of the ground. It was the supreme masterpiece of God's great creative handiwork. The Almighty formed man after his own likeness. And his spiritual creation is still in process. God reveals much about himself. He is composed of spirit, not matter. He is a God of supreme mind. He tells us he has eyes, ears, nose, mouth. He has arms and legs, feet and hands. He wrote the Ten Commandments on stone tablets with his own finger. Which finger? Mm -hmm. That one. The marvelous human body is formed and shaped like God, unlike any other creature. Wait, wait, wait. Can we just back up for a second? It says that God's made of spirit, not matter. And then like it describes all of these very matter based parts that he apparently has also. So yeah, he's got exactly. spirit fingers. What the fuck right. is spirit to begin with? I'm still well, yeah. And then, and then to say, hey. oh, that must be spirit fingers, spirit arms. I mean, I know it's about spirit fingers. It's almost a like lot of fingering out. happening. <laughs> so much fingering going on. Um, so I found it. It's First Kings twelve ten. The young men who had grown up with him replied, "These people have said to you, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Now tell them, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. It was a taunt. My dick is so big." But, and basically it's saying like you think you are pressed now i'm worse so it's a it's not a dick joke it's a dick threat 
<laughs> we got obelisks and all that stuff, uh, like from, from ancient times. It was a sign of power. The marvelous human body is formed and shaped like God, unlike any other creature. Yet God, being spirit, possesses inherent eternal life. He is endowed man with only a limited physical existence sustained chemically in principle much like the motor in your car mm -hmm. um, he was needing some help with things you know if he needed to work through us little vessels you'd think he could have made us a bit more sustainable I know. we're kind that's, of squishy and breakable we're that's sex a very big <laughs> we're, we're what <laughs> we're sacks of shit Look at us. I prefer squishy and breakable, but sacks of shit works. <laughs> That's very true. I mean, like at the very bottom of our sack is a bunch of shit. So God designed in the human body two basic types of systems. Ooh, let's see. One is the life-sustaining apparatus. This includes the highly complicated digestive, circulatory, respiratory, and other systems. These are coordinated in functioning by the nervous system, which in turn is directly connected with the mind. The other basic system is the genital or sex system, making humans male and female. It serves to perpetuate not the individual, but the race. But it also generates love and a desire to marry a certain one and stimulates marital love to preserve the home and family. This genital system too is connected by the nervous system directly with the mind. These two general systems serve different purposes, yet there is a connection between the two. The genital exercises, excuse me, the genital apparatus exercises a considerable influence on the life-sustaining functions. The female sex hormones cause a woman's body and mind to be feminine. The male sex hormones cause a man's body and mind to be masculine. Also, there is a closer analogy between male and female sex organs and sex functioning that is generally understood. It is the genital system that we need here to describe. Here we go. Yeah, we our genitals. <laughs> we shall use in this description of sex anatomy and functioning the medical or scientific terminology. I strongly urge all parents to learn these terms and to use them in teaching their children. Oh, our parents did that. Yeah, they did. I too. Who, Mine who too. That? Yeah. That's true. People, uh, I think parents should always use the correct terms for our body parts. Yes. Yes. Agreed. I, so I many don't good know. You yeah. don't want to use the word goo goo? Your goo goo is hanging out. <laughs> Okay, so for a while, like when I had, I so I had my kiddos at home. I remember my midwife, uh, we were doing a little filming of it. She was like, you don't need a half hour of your hoo-ha or no, what woo-hoo. You don't need a half hour of your woo-hoo. And I just thought that was the funniest thing to call it a woo-hoo. And so when my kiddo was tiny, I called it a woo-hoo and I thought that was great. And then we were watching an episode of Dora and there was a star that came out of her backpack that was named woo-hoo. And so there was this whole sequence of like, there's woo-hoo. Do you see woo-hoo? Point to the woo-hoo. <laughs> and then, and she's looking at me like, eh, what? So at that moment, I was like, okay, we're going to switch to the real words now. <laughs> I tell you what, I had such a hard time writing my first book when it came to describing genitalia for sex scenes. I had to go on, you know, all sorts of writers forums. I'm like, what do I call my vajayjay? Holy shit. Like I literally had to Google, uh, what are the different terms for a vulva? What are the different terms for a penis? Like, how can I, and like, how can I make this portion sound more sexy and not like I'm talking about anatomy here? Like cock, the word cock is about the hottest you can get when describing a dick, right? Dick, it, yeah. it's okay, but it has to be cock in order to be like an erotic scene. And like, what do I call my vagina? If it were not entirely too embarrassing, 
A social gathering could be given a hilarious evening by each, one at a time, saying right out loud the names for sex organs and functions. They do. The eliminative functions. I'm sorry. Oh. Is this what we're about to do? Penis. 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 I love that Armstrong thinks it would be a hilarious social thing to get your friends together and to sit and shout out, Dick, cock. <laughs> I love it. I'm just going to that's like a, a school game. Probably no two people at the party would reveal the same terminology. Every young mother seems to think up some new outlandish names for such things. It becomes a sort of secret language. Mm -hmm. Like Rusty Trombone. Or a Dirty Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> Italian sausage. Are you saying Armstrong would have loved Urban Dictionary? If I might, at this point, be permitted one digression intended to be humorous. It, if I may get all y'all's permission. I should like to mention the cute saying of a year and a half old little girl. Her mother had tried to break her of bedwetting by making a shaming face and uttering a sound something like k k Am I saying that right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It just... Or, I don't know. In her mm. baby talk, this little girl soon began to call this particular means of elimination by a term she pronounced k, almost like ku. Huh. Then one Probably day, for the first time in her life, the little girl saw an ocean. She was tremendously impressed by its magnitude. Oh, mommy, she exclaimed excitedly. Ocean ka pang. Pang was her baby talk for panties. The adults haven't stopped laughing since. The moral So the ocean's is, wetting its pants is what she was saying. Okay. The moral <clears throat> is children should be taught the proper professional terms rather than some weird terminology of your own devising. I mean, yeah, I get that, but as an as children, yeah, they have to be taught what the actual terms are, but as adults, we can be super immature and, you know, come up with new terms for <laughs> shit like this. I mean, yeah. Uh, but for adults, like, we can speak of our genitalia in different ways and different, well, but for different reasons, right? Like, these are the things that adult brains can handle. Like, okay, I'm going to the doctor to get a pap smear. Like, I'm going to say vagina. I'm, you know, having sex. I'm probably going to say pussy. I, you know, like. Hmm. That, what you just <laughs> talked about, Patty, is the delight of sociolinguistics. When huh. uh, terms are appropriate for certain things. Like, when is it more appropriate to use certain terms in certain domains and others in others? Um, and I do believe the nicknames are just as valid as the scientific names. It just depends on the sociolinguistic aspect of it. Sure, I get that. I think the reason mm. that I would stand by kids knowing the real names is for protection, right? Because kids who don't know the real names, um, if they're going to be abused or right. groomed by someone, then they have much less ability to say what's happening to them. And that's a very good point, too. Yeah, yeah. And if they do have the real words, that's going to scare off a, a, a potential abuser because they're like, this kid's going to know exactly how to say what I'm doing. When I first started making content, it was after watching Shiny Happy People. I've said that a billion times. And I was looking into like all these different cults and their practices. And what's very popular, like for example, among the Amish community or among the FLDS or among like, uh, like the various like ridiculous or IBLP is that they don't know like uh, uh, what is down there. Like they actually don't know of the functions and stuff like that. And regardless of what bullshit Armstrong is saying here, I'm just grateful that our cult never had that problem. Three functional categories. Ooh, we fun. humans cannot live the clean and happy lives the creator intended and made possible unless we understand his purposes and the laws regulating sex functions. This is true regardless of age, sex, or marriage status. 
It applies to all from the age of puberty. And there are many things about sex which parents need to teach children as soon as little minds begin to come become curious about little bodies. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I'm excited to see what he has to say that parents should be teaching little minds about their little mm-hmm. bodies. Uh, that's probably I some of the interesting that I was told. Um, that's what I'm in for. I'm like, is this stuff that I was taught? So here we go. Let's see. All right. This book is not intended to be a technical scientific textbook to educate professionals. I mean, thank the Lord for that. Uh, though no, certainly the Lord. <laughs> you know. Hey, if the WCG got big enough, he might have said so. If the WC <laughs> ever got big enough. Though certainly every doctor, psychiatrist, or other professional dealing with sex ought to know what has been covered in this book. Mm. Hmm. It is, however, the purpose of this book to reveal not only God's purposes and the right attitude toward sex, but those basic, those somewhat elementary biological facts, which ought to be known by teenagers as well as the marriageable and the married. What the fuck is he talking about marriageable? Some people. Older than teenagers and not yet married. I think he's just basically saying if you haven't gotten married yet at a certain age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, okay. I was thinking like, oh, some people are not yeah. material. I'm like, courtship. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Man, utterly unlike animals, arrives at sexual maturity several years before he achieves mental, emotional, and social maturity. True. Boys and girls are capable of becoming parents years before they are qualified for the responsibilities of parenthood. Yeah, True. that's because God didn't design it. That's because evolution was doing what evolution does. And it's selected for that because the quicker we make babies before we're smart enough to realize we shouldn't, the more the species keeps mm-hmm. going. <laughs> or, yeah. or conversely. Go ahead. What? No, go ahead. Uh, I was just saying, conversely, what about like it takes a village and when you have children, like the, uh, like evolutionarily speaking, like when you have children, then usually it was the older generation that would take care of your children as you learned the ropes. And then when it became your turn, then you would do the same thing for your children's children. And, yeah, and so, yeah. Teenagers need this knowledge for their own protection. In this age of pressures toward promiscuity, blinded by false teachings, adolescents cannot be expected to resist premarital sex unless their minds are opened to intelligent acceptance of God's purposes and laws. Okay. Deep breath. Also. All married people need this knowledge if their marriages are to be preserved in happiness. Because I know the way, guys. It is the lack of this knowledge which has caused 90% of all marital unhappiness, contention, separation, and divorce. Good. None divorce is can... not necessarily a bad thing. Nope. No, it has its place. Come on now. None can understand what he needs to know without an elementary knowledge of the anatomy of sex organs, as well as some knowledge of sex stimuli and sex functioning. And so we approach here the necessary knowledge of anatomy and functioning in a manner quite different from that which has been commonly used. The genital system is composed of three functional categories. I'm going to say this is probably not in scientific terms at all. These are, one, glands. These produce the germinal cells and the hormones. In the male, these glands are called testes or testicles, and in the female, ovaries. Testy, testy. One, One, two, two, three. Three. The thing is that there's more than just those glands. You also have the prostate gland. You also have the pituitary gland. You also have, yeah, there's a lot of glands. But you were saying that he doesn't use scientific terms. He actually is. He just doesn't go all the way. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, I guess just to say that it's three functional categories. I was feeling like he kind of made that part up. Two, ducts. Not with a K. Ducts. These tubes transport the germinating cells from testes and ovaries and render 
possible fertilization. In the male, they are the vasa efferentia. Huh, I think interesting. I don't actually know that one. The epididymis, the vas deferens, and the ejaculatory duct and the urethra. Without looking in it up, the- I do believe the vasa efferentia is the is within the testy, if I remember correctly. I'm going to take a look. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, weird. I, vas deferens I'm familiar with, but and and the epididymis, but the vasa efferentia was new to me. Uh, in the female, there are the fallopian tubes or oviducts through which the ovum is carried from the ovary to the uterus. <clears throat> Three organs of copulation. Through these, the male germinal cells called spermatozoa, reach the ovum for fertilization. These organs are, in the male, the penis, and in the female, the vagina. The fertilized ovum remains in the female uterus, or womb, where it is nourished and developed sufficiently to be born. Do the pelvic muscles contract with females, too? I think they do. Uh, When you have an orgasm? orgasm? Yeah, is it? Okay, so it's the same. Okay. Yeah, and so so like we have the same well, when I was <clears> pregnant, <throat> when I was pregnant, you know my uh, uterus grows like 100 times bigger than its net normal size when you're mm-hmm. pregnant. And uh mm-hmm. when I was pregnant and had an orgasm, my whole uterus would go tight, like mm. tight and squeeze. It was very no. I mean the uterus was huge. It was a very strange sensation. I heard I heard that pregnant sex is some of the most pleasurable for a woman. It can be good. Also, when I was pregnant, when I had an orgasm, I cried. I, oh. It was like it was like I wasn't sad. I wasn't any particular emotion, but I just release completely. Over, yes, yes, just the release of needing to like sob my eyes out. Happened. They're beautiful. That's. I mean, yeah, it kind of freaked out my husband at the time because he's like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> But then after a while, we just figured out that's what happens when apparently when I have pregnancy, hormones going. I have a question uh, about the female anatomy. This is actually a legit question. Um, so when a male has an orgasm, so the the muscles will, it, it feels like a pushing. Like it, 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 like, so like, because of the ejaculation, it feels like it, it, like it contracts and it's like you're getting something out and it feels like it's like a pump, 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 pump to, to get it out. Does it? What does it like the sensation of the contraction of the muscles actually feel like in, in the in the female body? Does it feel like a a pump bringing something in, or does it feel like more? It, it's just like a <clears throat> type of like a, a thing because like for us, it's like it's more like the pushing it out feeling. Oh. Hmm. I wouldn't say it's like a bringing it in feeling, but there's definitely like like a really strong orgasm can kind of make the vaginal muscles do almost like a milking like bringing it in yeah i've heard about that right right and so that's why i I was wondering was because it's like i wonder if it's like biologically that way for like the pushing in and then like for the receptor for the receiving of it um because like like it is the yeah it just feels like when, when you're ejaculating it actually feels like every contraction is like you getting that stuff out of you it, it, it really yeah. feels like it's exiting and i don't know if that's the same feeling you get when you give birth like getting it out that might be the same feeling that we get with the the, the male orgasm okay so amazing. giving birth feels like uh taking the biggest shit you've ever taken okay all right it does yeah there's more to it but that sensation's there um, but I will say for things like female ejaculation, uh, I don't know that there's exactly a push feeling in the way you're describing, and it would be a different place of pushing than the birthing process anyway. Um, but I would say it's more of a like, well, this is just for me, I guess. I can't say for other women. But it also that, might be different between pre- people as well, I'm sure. Go ahead. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> um, but for me, that feeling of the ejaculation is more like just like a letting go Mm. it's less of a push and more of just a like sorry but like an opening and it it, it reminds me of like for me personally (laughs) it reminds me of like when you have like a, a a bottle of toothpaste and it's like you're going push 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 to get more of that toothpaste out that's what it feels like Hmm. so yeah that's amazing joel i have never heard it described that way 
Um, now I'll have to consciously think about it. Talk. You can ask Simon if that's the same for him as well. But like to me, it's like a, a bottle of toothpaste say, that you have at the bottom of the base of toothpaste and it's going pushing it out and then something comes out and then it kind of like pushes again and pushes again and pushes again until it's all out from that location of the bottle of toothpaste. So this is so. like a relief in that sense. So like get that Right, exactly. Out. Exactly. It yeah. expels so. it. Yep. I feel like for me, because I'm 100% clitoral stimulant, like there's no other way to get me off. You just, it's clitoral. So mm -hmm. vibrators are my friend. Um, <clears throat> it just, it, it just kind of feels like an explosion in that area, but it goes throughout the body. You know, it's almost like women, when they orgasm, it's typically head back, your, your toes can curl and you're just kind of, you arch your back. And you're just like, oh, you just this feeling that goes throughout our entire body. And then you have that really smooth, groovy after an orgasm where you're just like, Oh, it was so great. But at the same time, you almost feel like you didn't get it all, you know, like, like you got to go again. That's why 10 orgasms in a row, no problem for a woman until you're just like, you, you could just keep going and going. Like, I'm ready for more, dude. It's almost like we don't get like the same sense of relief off of one orgasm. We have to keep going. We have mm, to keep going. Okay. All of a sudden it's, it just intensifies with that next one, you know, <laughs> it's true. Well, I, I think I feel like that sense of release does happen though if the if the ejaculation happens. Hmm. What? Like, like if, if I you ejac actually work up enough to do that. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Female ejaculation, whatever the fuck that is, that's good for you. Mm -hmm. Jealous. But yep. usually that's it's at wrong. the end of like being in the place you're talking about, like that orgasm cloud of just like just keeps going. It's that's like at the end of being in that place for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like for me, I don't, I don't pre come at all unless I've been edging for a while, oh, and okay. and so I, I wonder if it's similar, like with ejaculation for you as well, because it's like if you're like really worked up, then I might, and then when I do pre come, I pre come a lot, but <laughs> like that's uh, that's like usually because of sexual frustration, so oh, yep. yeah, Sorry, yeah but usually, usually I'm bone dry. Sorry, I'm eating because I figure a lot of this we can't use anyway. So fine, ahead. we're talking about weird things that our bodies do anyway. So you're good. And like, also like with BDSM, like how my nipples do secrete if you work on them a lot. Do they? Really? That's pretty yeah. impressive. Male male nipples will secrete if you work on them enough. Yep. It's probably more colostrumy and not milk. -ish. Probably, yeah. It's like a clear liquid, almost like yeah. almost like almost like pre-cum, actually. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> but oh, you don't cool. pre-cum. But for your what, what, YouTube, yeah, uh, well, no, no, no. <laughs> you have to really work on them, though. I'm talking about like an BDSM situation where they're like getting decimated. That type of situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> the body, like the church. No book I have examined and researched on sex anatomy and functions makes any mention of the great architect who planned, designed, and produced it. Maybe that's because there's no scientific evidence of such thing, you dummy. All right. Sex is viewed coldly merely as something man finds he has, not knowing why or anything of the designer's purposes, knowing only what he sees and in his self-centered, concupiscent human nature experiences. I have never seen that word before. Concupiscent? Isn't that the one that we said the other day was like concubine? Or we thought it was concubine? Like related strong to sexual desire. Yeah. I just searched it. It means strong sexual desire. Concupiscent. Okay. Oh, Bless you. <laughs> Please save that. Me. was a form of relief. It was. It was. <laughs> I felt a little twinge down there. Yeah. <laughs> I usually do too, but it's just because I'm peeing myself a little bit. It's fine. <laughs> uh, uh, this instruction book nonsense. Here we go. Yep. But the Eternal, in his instruction book for mankind, compares the marvelous human, human body to God's church, which is the body of Christ. Christ. <laughs> the various members in God's church have various functions, and God provides them with various spiritual gifts for the performance of these functions. This is found in the chapter devoted to the spiritual gifts. The twelfth, the twelfth of First Corinthians. The, the human body. The twelfth. Okay, I get it. I understand. Yeah. I understand now. Like okay. Convoluted way to say mm -hmm. First Corinthians twelve, but whatever. Okay, the human body, like God's true church, 
is not composed of one member, but many. It is the same with God. As explained previously, the biblical instruction book reveals God is a divine family. Only the one God, but composed of more than one divine person. God, again, not the Trinity. I'm just going to say it like this instead of like this. Exactly. But yeah, okay. getting back to the 12th of First Corinthians, that's just another example of why he didn't actually fucking write this. Like he took right. another book because of the wording is so much different than... It doesn't feel like him. Yeah. 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 The first half of the book was very much him writing because of all the inconsistencies and re repetitiveness. But here, I think these are more scientific books because he has to look up this shit because he has no idea otherwise. And so he just failed to um, change some of the wording to make it sound like him. Right. It's kind of like you get things here and there. Like if you look a little bit farther down from where we are, where he says notice, I think that is him saying that. Uh, so, yeah. so I think he just, he inserts himself from time to time, but I do feel no. as if this is slightly off, <laughs> off the scale. <laughs> so <yep. laughs> Nancy and I are both like, Oh, you what? <laughs> Joel, you're adorable. You know, oh my gosh. <laughs> you are adorable. So with the church, and so, likewise, with the God-designed human body made in the likeness of God. Here, then, we shall see another manner in which man is made in the likeness of God. One God, more than one person. One human body, more than one member. Also one church, more than one member. When I hear the word member, I'm thinking of member. Oh, for sure. Well, of <laughs> we're talking about. Notice. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body <laughs> as it hath pleased him. Mm. <sighs> okay. What? Pleasing God. For that second coming, Joel. Yep. He hath God set the members, every one of them in the body. He set the members in the body as it hath pleased him. I'm sure I'm sure it did please him. So he put your prostate behind a fleshy wall. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. But then it's amazing when I get there. Awesome. <laughs> and did you know that the ovaries basically float around, not float, but they're they're potentially all over the place in uh, mm -hmm. a female abdomen. They're not like in that little like uterus ovary thing. Like we see you can the see the fallopian tubes that kind of like hover right there, uh, and it's like it, it, they don't actually touch each other. And no. I think that's also part of the reason why uh, they were talking about hysteria because they thought that the entire uterus would go around the body. And so... <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Uh, I guess. I, okay. For whatever reason, doctors didn't uh, dig apart female bodies when they were learning anatomy. I, still, it's a problem in uh, medical studies and things. It's very strange. Yep. And also people of different ethno backgrounds. Yep. Yes. Right. And about like how the assumption is that black people have thicker skin. Oh, that just bothers me so much. Or <laughs> so, don't feel pain. Literally. Yeah, that's the point because of their their quote unquote thick skin. I can't like when I hear shit like that. I'm like, oh, that is horrible. And then and then we chastise uh, that same community when we say things like. Uh, it goes, oh, what, because how often do people of that community talk about how much pain they're in or how they don't have that great access to medical care? And then and then we say they're hypochondriacs. But oh, we, yeah. as a medical, the, the systemic problem is we think that they should handle better pain. And, and it's like, the, oh, uh, it just. Mm. Right. They're not believed when they do go. Right. They're not. What's going on. Well, women aren't believed either in general. So imagine for a woman of color. I can't. So apparently it was God who designed and set the sex apparatus in the physical human body as it hath pleased him. You got a so, second coming. Uh, it's obvious right there. If we wonder 
why the amusement park is near the garbage dump. It's because that's what God wanted. It pleased him. The amusement park near the garbage. I've heard that before, but it's not my line. It's not my line. Uh, the, the woman who played the woman who played Pat on Saturday Night Live. Uh, she did a speech about talking to her kid about sex stuff, and that was her. That was her line about amusement. Wasn't park. she? Isn't she also <laughs> like uh, a disillusioned uh, former Christian as well? I think so. Yeah. Then let us learn what we need to know about them without false modesty or foolish prudery. Amen. But as God, as God would have us know, follow this twelfth chapter of First Corinthians a little further. The stern, harsh prudes who formulated a false so-called Christian ethic about sex said of the genital system, we have no need of thee. Okay. God rebukes them, and they should, even in those early centuries, have read his rebuke. Here it is, beginning in verse 21. Hmm? I have no need of these. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm just going to pretend they don't exist, except <laughs> somehow we keep making babies. I don't know. We must be using them when we don't realize Magic. It, but... Magic. Ah, it must have been the or, magic sheet. The magic like sheet the whole. Those medieval manuscripts. Well, wasn't when was it? Was it medieval times? The idea that like they shouldn't be touching at all. And so in order to make a baby, they had like a sheet between the couple, and then there was just like a whole separation. Is okay. So that comes from two areas. That was not medieval. There uh there are people say that Hasidic Jews do that. Um, and because they are so, uh, but that's, that's not, th there's like a bit of truth to it, but it's not all the time. And it's not, it, there, there, there's, there, there is a bit of truth, but that's not like the all, always going to be that way type of situation. And then there's also, I believe it's the Amish can, has oh. something or, or like the Pilgrims I thought the Amish something like, like that. got it on a lot. They do. No, no, no. I'm talking about like the courtship. Thing, like you, like a man will be like in a sack it, it's like they will they will sew a sack i don't know if it's amish i know it's like like around the time of when the pilgrims were coming over and stuff like that they would actually bind men and let them sleep in the woman's bed but without any physical activity to like get them used to the concept of sleeping together um and so they would so they would bind them in like a almost like a pillowcase um, and, and I think that also was like the beginning of like the concept of cutting a hole in the blanket or something like that. Oh. So there was like a, there's like a, and the people do associate that with the Hasidics, but they don't really do that because it's just that they aren't allowed to touch each other. They're not allowed to touch each other during certain times, like such as during menstruation and stuff like that. Oh. Yep. Like a woman will not touch her husband unless it's a certain circumstance. Like she's not even allowed to like reach over the table and touch him. But when they're alone with one another, they can. It's like okay. that. Okay. And they think okay. it like it, it, it uh, heightens the the sexual tension. So that way, when they do go to bed together, they'll have they'll be swinging from the chandeliers. So <laughs> yeah. <it's>, <laughs> so because yep. you can't like touch. Those. Can't touch, can't touch. Now we can touch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is, there is some fun to that, I suppose. <laughs> I guess the way I'd heard about it was the idea that the sheet between was intended so that there wasn't, so that the procreation could occur, but there wasn't, like, pleasure no of bodies right. touching. You know? Right, and I think it was a misnomer, or only, like, a certain group did it or something, but people associate that definitely today with the Hasidics, but I, they don't do that, uh, really. Weird. I don't <laughs> think I've ever heard it associated with Hasidics. I definitely thought it was more of a puritanical Christian thing from way back when, but sort of nonspecific, so maybe it's not real. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Stereotype. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Uh, here it is. Beginning verse 21. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble, the Moffat translation says rather yeah. delicate or dishonorable, are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, sex, really? Why do we think the sex organs be oh, less honorable? honorable? Fuck all Can the be. way up. Yeah, yeah, fuck all the way up. 
all ancient societies had it turned the other way. They thought those were the parts to be like, right. Mm, like make right. much of those. <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> There's actually a very specific word in Hebrew for one of those. Yes. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. You yeah, have a I pillar that can hold up a structure or a pillar that just stands by itself. Oh, well then. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I think for most of human history, we've we've glorified our sex organs rather than vilified. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, let's see. Upon these, we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. I. What's he saying? I, Nay, okay. much more those members of the body. So no. The so members this is of the verse... body which seem more feeble are necessary, and those members of the body which we think are less honorable, the sex ones, but we as we bestow them more abundant honor. I don't understand. I'm pulling up. I'm pulling mean? up my own translation of the my personally uh, my NLT version because I really like the way that it flows. So I'll read it. Uh, he said verse 21. Oh, I see. It's a Bible verse. Okay. <laughs> I can't understand uh, what it means. <laughs> the eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we okay. regard as less honorable, that we regard as less honorable, are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen. I, I actually like the Corinthians version of it, like how it, how it reads. It's just like, yeah, it actually is very, very important. That's why we protect it more. Or because it hurts when they get schmucked. Right. But I mean, even with women, like women don't, don't uh, it doesn't really, unless you like land right on the clitoris, it's not really going to really do much of anything. <laughs> so. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> Also, those the, our crotchy areas like leak stuff. So, you know, I honestly and I'll, I'll repeat it again. I think when we get kicked in the balls, it's like period pain. I really do think so. I think it's the same pain because it's like the pain that you excrete from your ovaries. What are what are our ovaries? It's our testes. So it's the same. Yeah. I think it's the same pain. Okay, I could see it. When we come to consider the human body from the mind of God. We see it not as something shameful and evil, but as something wonderful to be understood with clean and healthy minds in awe of the handiwork of the great designer. For this is what God beheld when he had formed it and pronounced very good. I mean, I also think that our junk is kind of funny looking and I think that's fine <laughs> and fun. I, you know, I, I, I'm I, curious I, about these things. Have fun with it. So I've seen like compilations of pictures of uh, of like uh, of how the same body part looks among like a whole collection. It seems to me, and I could be wrong because I'm just not like because of my um, formerly prudish nature, I, I don't I'm not able to recognize it. But it seems as if there's more variance in those parts than in other parts of the body, it, because there is a lot of variance in genitalia. Um, and it's like, but although you have different shapes and sizes of nose and shapes and sizes of eyes, so I don't know if it's just me, like not having been exposed to to seeing it because of my prudish nature before. Then I'm like, oh, there is a variety because there's well, a variety I, of human faces. So yeah, that's what I'm wondering too. Because I, I, that's so funny that you say that because I feel like I had that same thought just the other day of like maybe they all do look really different, but our other body parts don't. But they probably do. We're just used to seeing. The broad range of different noses mm -hmm. and if everyone had their cocks out all the time we'd probably just be like yeah that's normal they all right exactly i mm -hmm. mean uh, this is a good question i kind of think we should look at lots lots of genitalia and investigate this yeah, and, and we should investigate this yes we should. <laughs> yeah. we should should we like come up with categories and things to like <laughs> these are the ones that do this. These are the ones that have this. These are, you know. Yeah, yeah, like different shapes and sizes and twists and turns and angles and appearances yeah. <laughs> and, and heads and yeah, because they because everything I, I have never come across another one that looked the same. 
Yeah. I mean, that is a coffee table yeah. book waiting to happen, friends. I think the Apostate Sisters and Mr. Difficult should collab on this coffee table book. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta figure this out. We gotta get to the bottom of it. Yeah. I would much rather do, I would much rather just do a generic Google search and do like a, a comparison. And I'm not talking like a porno pornographical one. I'm talking about like the, the more scientific uh, ones as well, because they do have those. I remember seeing them before, like a compilation of like, uh, of different uh, appearances. Well, look Love at it. tits. Look at how different every woman's Good tits point. are, you know? They look mm -hmm. so different. Like Even all three of them. Huh? Even one tit from another. I've got one that's way bigger. There was a... produce more milk, too. It's awesome. What? The psalmist was inspired to cry out, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. God has given each of us a marvelous human body to use as he directed in his instruction book. <clears throat> the possession of such a body imposes on each individual a sacred responsibility. Now, is he talking about when a woman possesses herself or is he talking about how the Bible does it where a woman is owned by her dad and then by her husband mm. and kind of sold? I don't know. Hmm. All right. Worth considering. I'm from God. <sighs> God's it <prophet>. is something. <laughs> it is something you may use to God's honor and glory and to your own great happiness, or you may misuse and abuse it to dishonor the creator and bring degradation, shame, and curses on yourself. Yay, Jesus! <laughs> Okay, well, I think uh, theology. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, good thing it's the next section because right. this one is the male oh, it's all about me. Oh, it's about you, oh. Joel. It's all about me. Okay, so all right, let's do it. All right. First, then we examine the masculine genital organs. God says through Paul. Those physical organs of the body which humans regard as more uncom. Oh, we just read this. Uh, uh, he has made very necessary with honor. And he continues, yes, God has tempered the body together with a special dignity for the inferior or uncomely parts so that oh. there may be no disunion in the body, but that the various members should have a common concern for one another. And notice I read the NLT version, which I think put it much more succinctly and much more um, uh, acceptable. <laughs> like much more acceptably uh, and all this is compared to god's church the body of christ it may seem to many that the most uncomely parts of the male body are those organs we now explain first the germinal glands called testicles that is until the truth about them is learned and then one should stand in awe at the divine mind and handiwork of the great god who designed and produced such a marvelous mechanism i'm sorry See, my are you just like picturing being on your knee and looking in awe at a pair of testicles in front of you? Like, oh, look at God's handiwork. That's amazing. I, <laughs> I, I actually I'm, do. Uh, but I'm not sitting there saying it's uncomely. Like, uh, No, it's not uncomely. Well, the, remember though, Paul himself said like in, in, uh, in, in Corinthians is one of the ones that we know pretty well that Paul wrote. And Paul was uh, was basically saying they seem uncomely, but we protect them the most. And and so the so he was making uh, what I like about Paul's sass is he really likes to pull the carpet out from under people's feet. And so he says, "You say it's uncomely, but why do you protect it so much?" And and so I, I really like that twist. Because um, they're balls, and they hurt when they get smacked. Right, and they're delicate in that in that regard. Yeah. Although they can handle a lot, they're very interesting things, and uh, and because they can be flattened and then rebound. Um, but then if they but they can be, it's almost like an egg. You know, like eggs, how you can like you can pr press on them and they won't break, but you jab them and then they they shatter. It's the same exact concept with testicles. So you can actually depress them and they will not break. Um, and it's really amazing. So it, it, it's anyway. But enough of that. They can. If you poke them really fast with a certain amount of pounds per square inch, they can rupture. Yep. Ah. 
Pat, do you remember that movie you and I both used to love watching while you were sleeping with Sandra Bullock? <laughs> the That's a good the pencil scene where she talks about Peter has one testicle. Because she remembers that dude that was talking about, oh, I, I was in the middle of a game and I had a pencil in my in my pocket. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Great movie. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, the thing is, though, if you only have one, what they do know is you just put something else in there to make it look appropriate, kind of like a breast implant. But, um, but the, your balls. But, yeah. I've come across I've come across guys who had in um, inflators put inside of their shaft because they were unable to maintain an erection. So they actually have oh, yeah. balloons inside of them and stuff like that, like actually inside of them, surgically implanted. Uh, it, and it, it's really fa fascinating, like to to see all the different ways that medicine has come to to allow men to continue, and women as well, I'm sure, uh, to continue to receive some sort of pleasurable sensation. Like when they mm -hmm. make a breast implant, they ask the women, "Do you still want to maintain sensation in your nipples?" And it's usually the case. Uh, but for men, they they ask, they still ask, but they have to. Uh, but for a lot of men, they don't care. Uh, it, it's really interesting stuff. Anyway, see the matchless mind and hand of the creator in these extremely necessary glands. Right, because they produce testosterone. Actually, they are the most important organs in the male generative apparatus. The testes are a pair of oval-shaped glands. They are enclosed in a cutaneous sac or a bag called the scrotum. It is made up of several layers, and it is divided into two compartments. Right each containing a testicle. Each testicle is about the size of a hickory nut, approximately one and a half inches long and one inch thick. The testes with the, what? I'm sorry. Um, okay, so there's this series. <laughs> on, <laughs> there's this series on YouTube that's like Norwegian sex ed. Oh called yeah. Blubertetten. Blubertetten. And uh, for some reason, it's something I came across when my kids were pretty little, and it was a big part of their uh, education, their sex ed education during our homeschooling years. But it is fucking awesome. Like, yeah. Norway has it figured out. Like, they don't shy away from actually showing bodies and showing yeah. what's up, and they just talk about it, and they talk really no nonsense. It's amazing. Pubertetten, seriously, if you're looking for a good puberty series, it's worth finding. It's subtitled and everything. But uh, the reason I laughed at that is because in that series, they literally show somebody holding like two acorns and then holding two like, I don't know if they're hickory nuts, but so, like walnuts, I think. And so they're showing the size that happens in puberty of the testicles going from this size to this size. And it was nuts. It was actual nuts. And so I find that very fun. I think Norway is is doing a lot. Norway, Sweden, Finland, all of them. They're they're really, really doing a lot, like with their prison systems and stuff like yeah. that. The Norwegian prison system. Oh, I just so hope that we can eventually get to that state in the United States. I really it's do. They're humanist. Yeah. 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 And the thing is though, it's like how the the public opinion here is like, oh, they should suffer, suffer, suffer. And it's just like, well, that's that's just perpetuating the same shit we've been in for the past several thousand years. And look at how how great it is yeah. so i'm very yeah. passionate about it i'm very passionate about it it makes me angry scandinavia yep. has it figured out in a lot of ways actually yeah where where all of scandinavia i mean they're, yeah. they're all just amazing they're happy they're they i think the swedish well, prison system is more intense though if i remember correctly yeah, yeah i mean I'm some saying in comparison to like a lot of the rest of the world yeah scandinavia it just looks so peaceful there and like they i don't know just like a nice natural peacefulness about it mm -hmm. they've moved away from religion and embraced humanism by and large like mm -hmm. these things are connected people yep yep uh I, I still i've always wanted to go to Oslo. by the way i'm just dropping that one in there but anyway um <laughs> Someday, buddy. <laughs> there's actually a really there's a, there's like a, a a statue park in oslo of all these of all these like little cupids peeing it's really <laughs> no. i really want to go i want to see the palaces there i want to see all uh, i love norway and i love oh, their national anthem is so pretty anyway oh anyway so uh actually <laughs> i'm such a nerd anyway uh, those testes with the scrotum hang between the thighs, forward, underneath the base of the penis by the spermatic, uh, spermatic cord. The testes are located on the outside of the body. Did you ever wonder why? The creator had a very good reason. This will be explained. 
many men themselves do not realize it, but the left testicle hangs a lo little lower in the scrotum than the right. Yes, and there's also there can be size variation as well. Did he That's think my men opinion. don't know that? I, I think what he's getting at is that like men don't know that all men have a lower left testicle. I think uh, like for me, it's like I, I think that I would always assume oh, it's either one or the other. But to know that it's always the left one, I think that's interesting. Oh. But what about people that have their heart on the right side? So I, I wonder, too, if there's variation in that way. Just as much as our heart is on the left-hand side, there are people with hearts on the right-hand side. I do and not so, that. yeah, you can, be, you can be completely flipped, mirrored. Yeah. Um, Sometimes in yeah. a twin situation. Oh. Ooh, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like a twin inside a twin. That's a that's an interesting thing too. Where you began as a twin, but then you merged, and then so you yourself are two, two beings together, but you're one because you have one identity up here. It, it's really interesting how it works. But anyway, um, perfect design, right? Right. <laughs> uh, like, honestly, I loved the variants and stuff like that. But uh, but uh, like yeah, it's not perfect. Please tell me where the word perfect appears in Genesis 1. So, I, and I'm saying that to all Christians watching this who seem to think that God created a perfect world. Didn't say that. No, oh, very good. Uh, very good. It's very good, right? It has good purpose. It, it is good. There is a Hebrew word for perfect. Um, many men themselves do not realize it, but the left testicle hangs a little lower in the skirt than the right. There is an important reason. Could blind evolution without intelligence have thought this out and made it thus. There is perhaps no pain a boy or man can suffer that is as excruciating as a crushing of or injury to the testicles. Did blind nature know this or did an all intelligent creator concerned for our welfare design it so that in case the thighs are crowded together, one testicle will slip over the other, thus avoiding any crushing, no evolution here. Bullshit. I agree. It is bullshit. If the left below the right is an evolutionary thing, which I suppose it is, if that still holds true. Somebody want to look that up, see if it really is. Hold on, I'm going to check my own. The thing he's not catching here is that if this is a real thing, like that, okay, at one point it was more normal for the testicles to come out, be perfectly side by side. And it did cause crushing to the point that those weren't going to be viable for reproduction anymore. But some, most of them turned out like this, and those didn't get crushed and were viable for reproduction. Pretty sure that's how you don't have ones that come out like this anymore. That's how evolution fucking works, right? Like he's saying, no evolution here. Like, you, are you serious? You're explaining exactly how evolution would have happened potentially with the placement of the hanging of the testes. Honestly, like, like with you putting your seed in my head. I just realized what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Miniature colossal laboratories. When we understand what science tells us about these glands, we ought to be struck with amazement, small as they are. <laughs> Still, they are laboratories performing a colossal work going on day and night. Yeah, so does your brain, so does your heart, so does your, yeah, exactly. Um, they perform an astonishing dual activity. They produce both the ge germinal or reproductive cells, which impart human life to an otherwise infertile ovum. Um, no, they don't. It's 50 50. It's 50 50. They have half the genetic code. And also the hormones which cause the body to be masculine in shape. That's true. Uh, the voice to be masculine in tone. Yep. In the, so why do we have hormone replacement therapy? And, and the mind to be masculine in its thinking. And that's an incredible job to be performed by two small factories weighing less than one ounce, uh, an ounce each. Let's take a quick inspection of these laboratories that generate human life. Each Small testicle contains a very large number of convoluted tubules, sometimes called seminiferous tubes, um, infinitely tiny. There are about 300 of them intertwined in a tiny but vast network of coils. This is that, that thing I was telling you about. If stretched out straight, the length of these tubules, the two testes, would be approximately one mile in length, and, within, uh, and all within factories only one and a half inches in length. Astonishing. Astonishing? I should say. Yeah, but how about the pituitary gland? Huh. 
Uh, these, uh, I think the pituitary gland is much more fascinating. Hmm. These tiny coils of tubules produce the male reproductive cells at an astonishing rate, actually millions an hour, any one of which could impart a human life to an ovum. These male reproductive cells are called spermatozoa, singular spermatozoon, and are quite generally in professional circles called sperm cells for short or sometimes just sperm. Spermatuza. 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 <laughs> uh, these sperm cells <laughs> are unbelievably infinitesimal. Um, uh, the smallest cells in either male or female body. They're saying the sperm cells are the smallest cells of the body. Are they? I think they're just... I know the largest well, cells we have are nerve cells. I mean, skin cells. our egg and sperm are like very specialized cells anyway. I think right. the egg is the biggest. Human yeah, that's huge. Like yeah, and the sperm are tiny. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. right. Uh, they are very different from any other cells in the human body. Each has a, oh, by the way, there is a big drawing here, but we'll get to that. Uh, each has a minute, minute egg-shaped head, an intermediate segment, and a tail comparatively long. They look under a microscope like tiny tadpoles, true. These infinitesimal cells cannot be seen with the naked eye, but are visible and measurable under a high-powered microscope. Each sperm is approximately one four thousandth of an inch in length. Even the female egg cell or ovum is only, Patty, is only about the size of a fine pinpoint. Yeah, but it is much, much bigger. Uh, like, uh, the the if you compare, like, the measurements there, just barely visible to the naked eye. And the okay. sperm cell is not more than about 150th as large as an ovum. If it was the sperm that were the biggest cell the human body produced... Armstrong would have been all the fuck over that. And he would have been like, of course the sperm is the biggest. Right. God wanted it to be visible. I agree. I agree. Because he's really downplaying the size of the egg. Because it says, yep. and the sperm cell is not more than about 150th as large as an ovum. But So he's not talking about how, how, how visible an egg is. You can actually see it. Yeah. And, right. And the biggest human cell. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. If it was a sperm, he'd be so touting the amazingness of the sperm because it's the biggest. Every human being starts his existence in so miniature a size. Spermatozoa of animals are much larger than these of, uh, those of humans. The scientific authorities have now discovered that <laughs> have now discovered that each human spermatozoon contains 23 chromosomes, and that it is through these that the characteristics of the father and also of, a grand, uh, of grandparents are transmitted by heredity to the child. Of course, the mother's characteristics are also passed on through the nucleus within the ovum. The I'm tiny sorry. No, no, no. He said it like an afterthought. The male thing is produced and transmitted through the father. And, you know, also the woman's there and her, her 23 are there too. And... I Fuck wonder, you, is he going to completely disregard the whole concept of pregnancy and how that is such an amazing thing that women can do? Oh, well, he's going to say God does it. Isn't it an amazing thing that God yeah. does? And that, yeah. and that they have it in pain because that's that's their just reward. And so, <laughs> oh, uh, the, anyway, uh, of course the mother's care. Okay. The tiny intertwined tubules within each testicle in which the spermatozoa are produced are so narrow that a hair could not pass through them. This book is not intended, as mentioned before, to be a technical or professional scientific work, but I do feel that certain of these more technical facts are important for the teacher should come to a realization of the us for the reader, I'm sorry, for the reader should come to a realization of the awesome mind and purpose of the creator. This vast intricate network of intertwined canals or convoluted tubules unite near the top to form a set of larger ones, the so-called vasa efferentia, and these in turn unite to form the epididymis. All this is encased within the scrotum. And finally, the tubules forming the epididymis converge into one seminal ductor tube called the vas deferens. The vas deferens continues up into the body, carrying spermatozoa to the seminal, seminal vesicle, which will be explained later. As there are two testicles, there are also the vasa efferentia, the epididymis, and the vas deferens for each, terminating into two seminal vesicles 
located beside or just under the bladder within the body. And we left off on the male hormones. I, yeah, male hormones. This topic, Let I feel it. like I never paid attention in school or something because I'm just like, I, I'm, or just wasn't properly taught because I, I have no idea what the fuck this is. All right. Well, we did it. We made it halfway through chapter nine. We'll be back next episode with the second half of chapter nine and more Herbert W. Armstrong shenanigans. Until next time, like and subscribe, everybody. Woo! Running away. Hi, Joel. So nice Bye. To see you. you too, guys. You ate a strawberry, so what if that's a little more failing? <laughs> Place the strawberry in half, and you get you have a little vulva. I mean, yeah. it's true. No wonder strawberry banana goes together so well.